Hello friends, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and second part of the Airbus A320 full flight tutorial. We stopped at this, almost this uh, position when we ended the last video, ready to taxi and that's what we will be doing today, taxiing to the runway, taking off, climbing up to the cruise level and then that's when we will end this part of the video and the last part will be the descent and landing let's jump into the cockpit and I'd like to do a recap of the last episode and I also have some other things that I want to share after receiving some questions about those things so a couple things to note here because I think I just made some mistakes or maybe not didn't give you the correct information in the first part these are from the comments to that video Peter Keenan was nice enough to comment that Airbus operates a dark cockpit concept so when you spawn the aircraft none of the enunciators should be lit that means the generators will be on and you wouldn't see anything that is stating off here I'm not sure if that holds true for the crew oxygen supply because that's the default state of this aircraft but that's what he commented uh, after seeing the part one also one thing about the fuel pumps because Airbus is a very automated airplane Turning on the center fuel pumps, pumps, even if you don't have any fuel in them, is fine. And he says the, the pumps will not run if there is no fuel in the tank. So, let me turn this off because I restarted the flight to record this episode. And last time we just disconnected the APU or turned off the APU prior to ending that video. The other thing I forgot is to do the fire test prior to engine start so you would open these and press the test buttons to see uh, in real life I believe that's how it's done and that's it down on the PFD side uh, the settings that you need to enter to integrate Simbrief is uh, under Flight, not flight, but under ATS Atsu AOC configuration, and this is where you enter your Simbrief username to integrate the MCDU and the tablet with Simbrief and pull your flight plan from Simbrief. It used to be a setting in the MCDU, but the team, I believe, carried everything over to the tablet. The other things that I want to touch base on is the sound settings. If you like to hear the PTU, you need to turn this setting to on. It's off by default. Sim options, this is where you can set the ADIRS align time, fast, instant, real. Uh, Self-test time uh, for the aircraft is also set here. Barometric pressure, you can leave that auto. Based on your location, this will switch between inches, mercury or hectopascals and you can also turn on keyboard input for the MCDU I never bothered with this setting so I'm not sure how that operates uh, you might have to refer to the fly-by-wire website for this uh, the defaults here is for the thrust reduction acceleration height and the engine out acceleration height and in reality those are all set to 1500 feet above ground level because it says height, not um, altitude and this is what's going to affect your thrust reduction acceleration under the performance page as you see we are seeing 4090 here this is 1500 plus the airport elevation which gives you the thrust reduction acceleration altitude and engine out acceleration altitude what this means is when you reach to this altitude you'll pull the thrust levers to climb detent and the aircraft will use that setting to climb out uh, to the cruising altitude same for the engine out god forbid if there is an engine power loss after this altitude the aircraft will uh, start accelerating and climbing even if you have lost one engine 
okay um, I think this is all I wanted to recap from the first episode obviously the Q&A has changed because it's a different day I'm recording this it was 3001 in the last part we are ready to taxi we will discuss this and you see some blue annunciations on the ECAM which we will talk a little bit but also I want to share something that was a request and this is going to be about the software I use to track my flights like a electronic flight bag aside from the tablet in the cockpit I used to use SIM Toolkit Pro and recently started to use Volanta from Orbex and I had some questions about that as well so that's what I'm going to show you before we start taxiing to the runway let me switch windows to Volanta and we can take a look at the screen together so this is the main screen when you are in a flight the Volanta will detect the aircraft you have if you have configured your aircraft under this menu here uh, with the tail number so it's taking it from the tail number and the air aircraft type it doesn't care about flight number you can type it per flight which ours is Southwest Airlines 1452 and you can also add a flight plan for uh, this flight using the sim brief in integration as you see it will check the sim brief there is a setting under the settings here that you add your sim brief username and then it will import that flight plan for you and as you see this is our aircraft this is our route with all the waypoints populated on the map for us and it will start tracking as long as you keep this follow flight turned on you can shrink this and this is the main screen what is nice about Volanta is you have a bunch of map settings here that you can see the Volanta flights around you Vetsim flights if you are flying on Vetsim, IVAO, FS Cloud, Pilot Edge and you can also see Vetsim ATC coverage as well the other thing is the flight briefing page I use a lot this brings your OFP from SimBrief and gives you nice tabs to jump around so this is the top section when you click the times it will show you the times for your estimated times for your flight it will pull the weights for your passengers and cargo and by the way if you remember we weren't able to enter 180 this is not the actual passenger count because the max is 180 for Airbus A320 including the crew which is six people so you have to take that out and when you are doing a full flight it's 174 passengers and I think that's what's wrong with the uh, SimBrief profile uh, of fly-by-wire mod also the flight log will you the w show you the waypoints and relevant information like the altitude at that waypoint temperatures like here positive 10 positive 14 and then minus 49 and the um, the information you see here is also uh, going to going to tell you what these numbers mean like outside air temperature is this top one at your given altitude which is this flight level 178 we should expect minus 7 degrees so on and so forth it will also give you the wind information here and and the flight plan for ICAO and you will also get to see the weather and the no times if there are any that's why I like about Simbri Sim, this OFP or flight briefing page of Volanta and this is the main map screen over on this side you can keep a track of your flights and see where you have flown and uh, they are also shown on the map you can also add screenshots while flying which will be listed on the map and you get to see those screenshots as well I have a couple I can't remember where we did those screenshots the aircraft page is where you add your aircraft Volanta will detect deliveries you're using with the tail numbers and it tries to populate this page it is not quite accurate so what you can do is hit the plus sign to add an aircraft this is your registration number and you have two ways of doing this you can create an aircraft per delivery you have but if you have too many deliveries this could become a uh, a work on your end that you need to do once to have your all liveries captured 
and I, I happen to see a screenshot that I took, someone took here. As you see, 30 minutes ago, someone edited this screenshot. So anyway, you, you enter your tail number or registration number to this box and the ICAO code for the type of aircraft that you fly. For Airbus A320, if I go back to the map, you see it's A20N for NEO and that's how you add an aircraft. Uh, let's say that's my tail number. The aircraft is A20NEO and you can create this aircraft and it will warn you if you use that tail number before so I need to come up with something different to demonstrate and you can create this aircraft and you can select an airline and it will let you select what airline you have for delivery and this will be populated under your aircraft which you can recall for your flights under the map uh, you can also edit the aircraft by uploading an image here which I did from my livery texture files and you can delete the aircraft or hide it okay so that's how you add they also introduce some challenges that you can try I never tried any of these so if you guys tried any of these and using Volanta let me know in the comments how, the, how good these challenges are on this side it gives you the Zulu time which is quite handy at times it gives you a search option to search for airports, flights or users. You can add friends and there's the settings option here where you set your account. Uh, you can import data from Team Toolkit Pro if you have flights. Uh, privacy, you can make your prior profile public or private or just friends. This is visibility and activity privacy. You can let other people see your flights or not. Connections, Discord, Navigraph and Twitch integrations are here. There is a premium option which is a paid option. General settings, this is the display, weather, radar, opacity, language and some general options that you can check. Simulators, it detects the Microsoft Flight Simulator automatically. Briefing format, you can use anything. If you are using an airline specific flight plan format, you can select that from here. This is all carried over from SimBrief, I believe. Briefing units, you can change between pounds and kilograms based on your location. And then the screenshots where they will be saved. And the change log is obviously the version change log that you can read through. I wanted to put this quick Volenta uh, information tutorial out for starting this video and this is coming from a channel subscriber I believe Ronnie requested some information on Volenta let's jump back to the simulator I think that's enough for Volenta and you can experiment that on your own time and let me know how it went back to the basics the engines are running we are consuming fuel and doing nothing here Alright, the APU is off, we'll turn the taxi light to taxi and that's it. If you remember we have already set our transponder code and turned the transponder to auto before taxi and the TCAS traffic advisory system to TARA, predict the wind shear to auto and weather radar to pilot side. From here the ignition start switch in critical phases of flight it needs to stay at continuous ignition to avoid any problems or any engine out risks and when you are on a, at a safe altitude then it can go back to normal this is close to continuous ignition on Boeing 737 or Boeing aircraft if you use those aircraft in another simulator because Microsoft Flight Simulator has only two Boeing aircraft which doesn't have that option from here what we need to do is we need to set the brakes, auto brakes to max for rejected takeoff. We'll turn the constraints on so that we can see the altitude constraints on our ND like so. Uh, flight director is already on and I turn the VOR on and go to the radio navigation page and tune the ILS frequency uh, for the runway we are taking off which is I can share through Navigraph and this was also a question how do I get my plane 
flight plan from Navigraph into uh, into Navigraph from Simbrief. This is how I do it. You go to flights, you add a new flight from Simbrief. So now Navigraph is owned by Simbrief, therefore it will carry over your flight plan and then all you need to do is select your approach. Uh, we are doing an ILS 225 fly left via the C with transition if you remember so we will select that and that is pretty much it and it will populate your flight plan here and you'll get to see your route uh, what I was saying yeah the the frequency so for that I need to go to Tucson open the charts list and go to approach and we are departing from runway 29er so we will take a look at the localizer VOR frequency there is no ILS for 29er right so this might not work for this instance but that the frequency is 116 decimal 0 that's what I will plug in here 116 decimal 0 and I believe according to fly-by-wire developers uh, it's not gonna accept it because that's not a valid frequency but when you enter the frequency here oh not there I'm sorry I, I tried to plug it into wrong place okay when you plug this in here you'll see the VOR station and this is for the enunciation on the FMA when you are on the runway you'll see runway during takeoff which I will I will speak about speed heading of the runway is set our initial climb is 6000 and we only have one restriction at 3200 so that's all good at this point we can arm the speed brakes and we can set our flaps to takeoff which is one that we set for on the performance page and we are pretty much ready to taxi to the runway let's disengage the parking brake and then I like to hit the B key to set the QNH to make sure it's set according to the simulator settings and we will add some power and the aircraft should start moving and then you can idle and when you get going the engine trust is enough to keep you going and we will we will keep uh, uh, the speed around 15 to 20 knots and this aircraft can turn or the best turn speed is 10 knots you shouldn't be more than 10 knots ground speed here while uh, doing the turns so I believe we need to take a left turn through here to get to runway 29er and that's what I'm trying to do here and we will taxi to the runway and talk about the settings for takeoff when we are close in the meantime you can just go through this blue text and do do the checks while you are taxiing one of them is hitting this TO config button up here which will test the takeoff configuration which will do a takeoff configuration test that button right there and tell you if everything is okay over here and says yeah TO config normal so that means all the takeoff configuration is set and then the cabin check is where you chime the cabin through here and the pilot as you see now all the blue text is gone so we are ready to take off I will keep taxiing and talk about other um, stuff that I remember while we are going there you can start the chrono at this point to time your flight if you like to and then you can turn the terrain radar on the pilot side not sure if this works with the development version it does it used to work with this stable one but I haven't used the stable version of this aircraft for a long time so don't call me for that and these two screens are separate so if you want to see the constraints over on here you have to turn them on separately and do the same setting for the VOR or ADF if you wanna see that as well I'm not sure why we are slowing let's just keep the trust up and get to the runway we can also take a look at the the wings and to have a, have some sort of passenger view here 
these are the custom wing wheels and the cabin wheels that I set I have a tutorial on how to set these up if you are interested and uh, want to learn how to do, set this custom camera views you can find that under the Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorials playlist in the channel alright so looks like my radar pedals are a little bit more sensitive than I like so during straight uh, taxi you can do up to 25 knots but you shouldn't be doing more than that I believe and this is probably going to be limited per the airport procedures if the airport has a pro has a procedure on the ground speed when taxiing you have to follow that and not breach that speed restriction if they have a restrictions or if they have restrictions for taxi okay we are almost there and we are reading the airport elevation from here 26 20 30 ish and we are getting close to the runway as you see on this screen here we'll take the last right turn and make a stop there at the hold short point and take a look at the takeoff configuration before we do the takeoff I hope you guys enjoyed the first part and I hope you will enjoy this one too if you do please hit that like button that helps and uh, promotes the video to others who are interested in aircraft and learning this aircraft you will be helping the community by liking the video to to uh, make the YouTube algorithm offer this video to other people who are looking for an Airbus A320 video uh, that helps a lot to the channel and to the community uh, if, if people are seeking some knowledge about how to operate this aircraft also if you are in a channel if you are another subscriber to the channel uh, consider subscribing and turning on the notifications to get notified for future videos after the Airbus A320 I will be recording the same setup with the 747 which also came as a request from uh, Fortech Gamer under this uh, under the first part as a comment um, also the other thing I forgot to do in the first part is when you are loading the aircraft with passengers remember the weights and balances page I will show you here in a second when we stop at the hold short point of the runway which is literally that uh, double yellow line with a dash we'll stop here alright and we need to make sure we contact ATC if you are using ATC here to, ta to get takeoff clearance and make sure there are no aircraft due on, on approach or takeoff so that we can enter the runway safely before we do that if I go to the performance page uh, I'm sorry MCDU menu at SU AOC and wait some balances remember this page where we loaded the passengers when you start the boarding you need to wait for the boarding to finish before calculating your zero fuel weight and filling out the second page of the init where you have to enter the zero fuel weight and the fuel on board so please keep that in mind I skipped that part very quickly and didn't wait for the boarding to complete which threw my zero fuel weight off in the first uh, video we'll keep this at the flight plan page we are ready to enter the runway so nose light will go to takeoff we'll turn the landing lights on assuming we have takeoff clearance that's when they come on and we'll turn the runway turn off lights to on this is optional but provides more visibility from the sides to the aircraft on approach or coming towards the runway we'll to turn the strobe to on and that's pretty much it for the overhead panel if we take a look at like straight up view uh, all the fuel pumps are on there are no warnings or signs that we need to worry about anti-ice we don't need to worry about that we are in a hot place Arizona but everything else is looking good so overhead is good down below and the FM PFD and ND are good no blue everything is set on the main control panel or, or M MCP brakes are set chrono is running and over on this side continuous ignition flaps are set uh, spoilers are armed and we are good to enter the runway so let's do this
we'll add some trust get her moving like so I love the sound of this aircraft they did a great job uh, improving the sounds Boris from fly-by-wire team processed all the sounds and he did a phenomenal job uh, with capturing the Airbus A320 sounds and making them sound more realistic alright um, the other thing sorry I keep coming back to the things that I remember I didn't do before you leave the gate you can lock the cockpit door this is now a thing in Airbus A320 fly-by-wire mod so before leaving the uh, gate for pushback locking the cockpit door is a thing that you need to do as the pilot okay so we are pretty much ready for our takeoff roll as you see I don't see the annunciation for runway here we will see if we will see that when we go to takeoff power alright friends the sim decided to crash so I'm recording this part for the second time we are ready to do our takeoff roll one final quick check just in case I forgot to do anything before doing the takeoff roll overhead looks fine everything is normal MCP is set and one thing I forgot to tell is you need to turn the transponder to on even before entering the runway so the continuous ignition as I said or maybe I didn't will stay at the ignition mode uh, not normal during the critical phases of flight like landing and takeoff and anything in between that is critical flaps are set spoilers are armed and we are ready to do the takeoff roll so we will increase the throttle let the engine stabilize around 40% M1 like so we'll release the brakes and we'll go Takeoff power, as you see, managed flex 55 SRS. Runway is not displayed. I'm not sure what the correct setting to get this displayed on the FMA. If you know, let me know in the comments. But Airbus pilots in real life say SRS flex 55, uh, I mean, managed flex 55 SRS runway auto trust blue uh, during takeoff roll. We are passing 100 watts, relieving the pressure on the stick approaching our V1 where we cannot safely stop and no matter what we need to take off and that's our rotate speed so we will lift the nose gently follow the flight director and there she goes lifts off the ground nicely positive rate of climb gear is coming up and we will follow the flight director from this point on and we will accelerate as you see the runway track is displayed because we are following the runway heading uh, the terrain radar is displaying the terrain beneath us radio altimeter is started to count the uh, above ground level or elevation of the aircraft uh, not the barometric pressure but radio altitude this is above ground level and now we are passing 4090 and the lever climb is flashing telling us that we need to pull the throttles back to the climb detent to set the aircraft for climb we will pitch the nose down according to the flight director and this will uh, make us accelerate and pick up some speed to uh, retract the flaps or clean the flaps when we reach 200 which is the minimum clean, sp clean flap speed at this point we are at a safe altitude we can turn off the terrain radar to see our flight plan path a little bit better and change the range to 20 miles so that we follow our aircraft and follow the flight director I am hand flying the aircraft right now and I will do this for a little bit more by following the flight director and keeping that dot at the center of these green lines as you see we are reaching our set altitude of 6000 at this point we can assume ATC cleaned us, cleared us to by the way we need to go back to managed vertical speed whenever you change the altitude vertical speed comes on so keep an eye on that let's retract the flaps and go back to clean flap speed or uh, zero flaps and we'll assume ATC cleared us to 20,000 feet we can go back to managed heading now by pressing up on the heading bug 
and we will follow the flight director as much as we possibly can and I tend to forget about that as I try to speak to you guys we will press up on the altitude selector knob to command the aircraft to go to 20,000 feet using the auto thrust we will follow the flight director and we will maintain our flight attitude as you see the aircraft is staying at 250 knots below 10,000 and um, managing that speed until we pass 10,000. At this point, if you choose to do so, you can activate the autopilot, which I will do so that it will give me enough time to talk to you guys. The aircraft will then um, start controlling the climb and the speed until we reach 10,000. We are climbing rapidly a little bit, um, so passing 9,000 when we get close to 10,000 uh, we will turn the lights off and start cleaning up the aircraft okay 9900 I think it's time for us to turn off the landing lights and run the turn off lights and the nose light and now we can disarm the spoilers and select the engine selector ignition selector to normal mode and also if you choose to do so if there is no turbulence you can turn off the seatbelt signs to relieve your passengers now the aircraft will accelerate to the climb speed that's set on the performance page on the MCDU if we look down to the performance page it's going to accelerate to 290 and then start climbing again which you will see here in a second and from this point on as the pilot flying all is left for you to do is monitor the aircraft and the autopilot and make sure you get clearance from ATC before climbing to higher altitudes. I'm going to select our cruising level, cruise flight level of 36,000 feet by assuming ATC cleared us all the way to 12, flight level 360 because we don't have any restrictions left other than this guy over here which we already passed uh, about 2590 or 2600 to be if we round it up and now aircraft is going to maintain 290 knots climb until it passes 29,000 feet at that point when we are passing through 29,000 feet we need to activate the max speed mode and the aircraft will set for Mach 7.8 as you see here for the rest of the climb until it reaches uh, flight level 360 and that will be the end of this video and we will meet again to discuss the descent and descent planning speaking of which if I bring up the navigraph window no thanks we already have that flight if we go and check our arrival we have a step descent if I show the chart if I can show the chart to you guys right there as you see our descent starts at Crane which is the next waypoint after our transition point of Cebu and we will descend to 9, 8, 7, 5, 3600 and 1900 to capture the glide slope which is our final approach fix so at this point we need to be fully configured for landing how we calculate the top of descent because right now WinEV is not implemented to the fly-by-wire mod let's speak about that until we reach to, to the cruise level on the tablet when you go to this calculator icon you can sync your current altitude from the PFD and we have to set our target altitude which is 10,000 where we are going to start the step descent on the approach when you hit enter it's gonna start displaying when you should start to descend to make it to 10,000 25 miles before target and our target in this example is this waypoint which is crane that we need to be at 10,000 to start our step descent and approach we also have some restrictions on our arrival Hollywood 1 and as you see we have a flight level 320 or below between flight level 300 and 240, between 240 and 190, above 17,000, 15,000, 14,000, and between 12,000 and 14,000. 
So the aircraft should respect and do not breach those altitude restrictions and we also have speed restrictions at 280 knots and 270 knots we might have to control this manually we'll see in the next episode and how we can track the distance to that waypoint crane if we are not sure when we are going to start the descent it says 33 miles before target but I need to know where exactly I will be uh, this many miles away from that target obviously we need to climb up to the cruise level to have a real number here but to track the distance you need to go to the progress page this line here is telling you the bearing distance to blah 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 this is two is the waypoint that we need to uh, know the altitude that we need to be at in our example it is crane if I plug crane in here and select the line select key it will display the distance to crane which is 319 miles almost so that's how I can track the distance to crane and when I check it uh, accordingly with the tablet it will tell me exactly when to start my descent to make it to 10,000 before crane so that's how I plan for my top of descent and I just wanted to share that with you guys quickly so we passed the transition altitude of 18,000 for US and that's why this QNH is flashing and telling us to go to the standard which then it will stop flashing and correct the altitude for the standard barometric pressure. Uh, I should have told this earlier but I was talking about the top of descent calculation so I think it is fine to do it a little bit later than normal but as you pass through 18,000 you need to switch to standard barometric pressure in the US transition altitude in European countries change and it is based off the country for instance it's mostly 5,000 in England and Germany I believe um, Holland, Copenhagen uh, and, and um, Denmark is around 6,000 if I'm not mistaken so it changes per country you have to look it up on the chart the charts of the airport will tell you the transition altitude also the SIM Toolkit Pro the other flight bag electronic flight bag I used to use is also showing you the transition altitude uh, I couldn't find anything in Volenta that tells us the transition altitude I might be wrong if you know where in Volenta you can see that just let me know in the comments please so that I can update my knowledge as well we are getting close to 29,000 I will just explain the max speed and cut the video there you don't have to stay and watch until we reach the cruise level because that's pretty much us climbing more and the aircraft will then uh, set itself for cruise speed and cruise thrust and we will keep that until the top of descent the only reason I might wait is to show the real distance that we need to start our descent to be at 10,000 at crane and I might speed up that part of the video so now we are passing 27,000 feet coming up to 29,000 shortly here in a little bit it's not worth cutting the video here just I'll just keep you guys for a couple more minutes for you guys to see what happens when we reach there and what is the difference between indicated airspeed and max speed max speed after 29,000 is a better calculation of airspeed uh, indicated airspeed is not displaying the correct uh, speed due to the density of the air after 29,000 feet uh, the pedo tubes are not getting enough uh, pressure because of the less dense air and the speed calculation or display is not accurate that's why you need to switch to max speed after 29,000 feet and you need to stay at max speed until you descend below 26,000 feet that's how I know and learned about the max speed and indicated airspeed difference and when you need to switch not don't know too many technical details but what I know is it's due to air density not being enough to calculate the correct indicated airspeed uh, and it's more accurate if you select the max speed at that altitude 
coming up to 29,000 now we will switch to max speed and you will see the difference over here 290 versus max 7.8 for the rest of the climb there we go 29 let's switch to max speed it is the same and as we climb more this will start dropping if I'm not mistaken then the aircraft will adjust accordingly all right so we will keep climbing for the rest of the uh, video and I will speed this part up and explain or take a look at the distance when we are at the cruise level Right friends, coming up to our cruising altitude slowly, hopefully we will get there in a little bit and we have only 2500 feet left to reach our cruise level and I will be ending the video when we get there and as you see as we climb the distance kept changing and increasing for 10,000 at crane so right now I know I need to start my descent around 74 miles or based on the calculation maybe even 78 miles will be the, the number we will be seeing here when we reach to our cruise level. Just a little bit more, stay with me a little bit and we will see. We can also check the progress page as you see it keeps calculating the distance to crane so this is a good way of uh, knowing when you need to start your descent. The flight plan also shows you the restrictions as you see here 320, 270 is calculated by the aircraft that is exactly between that restrictions that we saw on our approach as you see here that's that at Brune it's calculating 215 for Avatar and then 17 for day, 15 for Vedup, Vadup, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Neil is at 14,000, and CW at 13,000, which is exactly in between these numbers. So that's calculated by the aircraft, and we should see the aircraft respecting, and it's also displaying the speed restrictions as well that's 270 and 280 that we have seen so we will see how that plays out when we see the next part of this video series where we do the descent and approach into Los Angeles just a little bit more before we reach our cruise level and I think my calculation is close 79 I think this will show 80 or 81 now based on our uh, altitude that we need to start our descent 89 90 miles before Cebu and one suggestion or recommendation I can make is please try to play ahead of the aircraft and maybe start your descent a little bit early it is always better to be safe than sorry so you will have enough time to make adjustments if you start a little bit earlier and we will try to simulate that in the next part so it's showing 81 miles and I think it's gonna stop at 81 or 82 because we are almost at our altitude and altitude mode is activated and speed mode is max speed right now and the aircraft entered the cruise mode set down in the FMC where you see here it's gonna cruise at managed speed of 259 knots I'm not sure why it's not displaying the max speed I remember seeing it there so don't quote me on that but now it's gonna maintain that speed 
and as you see we are down to 260 because it's calculating Mach 7.78 and that is exactly 260 knots uh, for the max speed. If I speed, change the speed to the speed mode then it will try to accelerate to 290 which is not real. Alright, 82 miles before crane we need to start our descent. That we know and that we will save for the next episode of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did again, please hit the like button. This will promote the video for other flight simmers trying to learn this aircraft. And if you are not a channel subscriber, hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified for future episodes. Thanks for staying with me in this video and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.